Alright everyone, in this video I'll be doing a review of Zorin OS 9 Core. Now the developer has kindly provided me with a password key for Zorin OS 9 Ultimate, which is the pay for version of the distro. But for now, uh, let's have a look at the free version this time around, and maybe I'll take a look at the premium version in a later video. Now I know one of the key differences that you do get on the free version compared to the pay for one is that there's not as many styles to choose from on the operating system look changer. Now there's also not as much software pre-installed, so if you don't know what you're doing then probably you do want to go for the pay for one, but if you do have like a fairly good idea of what you want and you're happy with the few themes that you have to choose from, maybe you should just uh, try out the free version and see how you get on. Now, at least this time around it's based on the Ubuntu 14.04 which is a long term support release that will be supported for 5 years. So let's take more of a look at it. So let's start with the all important feature that is the look changer. So that's a Zorin look changer. So you've got three different styles to choose from here in the core version. Now the ultimate or premium version comes with six different styles. So that is the Windows 2000, Unity and Mac OS. But all we have in the core version is just Windows 7, Windows XP and GNOME 2. There seems to be a bit of a bug here on the Windows XP menu, and it's not showing any, any of the application icons. It's a bit weird. But it seems to work absolutely fine though in the other desktops. So if I go across to the GNOME 2, go back to applications, and we see we have all the icons there. Anyway, let's go back to the Windows 7 version, because at least that has the application searcher on the uh, start menu or application menu. Now one new feature that we have here in Zorin is the theme changer. So they've provided three different themes to choose from. So this is the Zorin light, so which we have a more traditional light colour theme here. Perhaps a bit easier to see than the Zorin blue that I chose initially. But I just fancied something different so that's why I started it that way. So the Zorin Blue, which was what I had. And lastly we have Zorin Dark. These themes are quite nicely done. And I like how they've kept a sort of consistent colour theme going throughout the distro. They've got a lot of the blue colours featured on the Close, Minimise and Maximise, as well as the scroll bars. Go across to Firefox, and this is something quite nice here that they've done on their home page. So we've got this little searcher, but you can choose between Wikipedia, YouTube and Twitter, or just go for the default, which is Google. So if I chose YouTube, popped in my channel, and there we are, I've got a list of some of my videos here. In fact, take a look at Zorin, and just open this up. So showing that we have the codex pre-installed. Right, I'm just going to switch across the light and then close this little toy. You can change some of the components of the system individually on the theme colours. So like here on the application bar at the bottom of the screen, we can choose themes from here and just say, oh I don't know, let's say I fancied the Zorin blue on here. Then I can have that. They've provided a few different wallpapers on the system, so yeah, not a bad selection. Got a few photos, a few different abstract type themes, so yeah, not bad. Although, as always, you can choose your own. So overall with the system, it seems pretty quick and responsive. I know there's uh, some bit of a lag with the compiz type effects here in VirtualBox. But I expect that's more of VirtualBox and Kubuntu issue rather than Zorin issue. Navigating around an SMB share is very quick and it picked it up instantly as well which is quite nice. And the selection of applications is pretty much what you need to get going with. So under accessories, yeah, nothing too special there. Under games, it's just a few lightweight games. You can install Steam through the software centre and you can get a few other pay for games as well. It's just using the Ubuntu software centre. So. For the web browser it comes with Firefox. Now I installed Google Chrome as part of my testing. And we've got Thunderbird for the email client. 
and you've got a Zorin Web Browser Manager, which makes it pretty simple if you just want to install a different browser for your system. Anyway, under Multimedia, we've got OpenShot for Video Editor, Rhythmbox for the audio player, and Totem for the video player. System Tools. Nothing too special here. We've already looked at the Zorin Look Changer and the Theme Changer. We've got Wine pre-installed and Plow Linux. So you should have a reasonable shot at getting some Windows applications installed on here. They're not guaranteed to work 100%. And lastly, we've got the Software Center. And that is it. So here's what I thought of Zorin OS 9 Core. So you've got the look changer there that offers the three different styles. So that is Windows 7, Windows XP, and GNOME 2. If you want the Unity, Mac OS X, and Windows 2000 styles, then you've got to pay for the Ultimate Edition. <laughs> We've got a new feature there that's the theme changer. And it's good that it's based on a long-term support release. So you've got the five years of support. So overall, I have given this distro 88%. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.